that pine cone, Lucas. <laughs> Save it for later. You're not in charge of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Lucas here in Vintage Surplus, and today we're going to take a look at the tap. This is going to be a pretty comprehensive guide to the tap, some setups, and just general look at it and uh, what it can do for you and why you should take a look at a tap and probably buy one at the end of the day if you're looking for a full combat load capable rig. So, let's get into it. The tap. All right, so the tap is tactical assault panel. Um, it is used currently by the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps as it's one of their standard issue items to like infantry, and it just carries pretty much everything you need uh, as far as base loaded magazines and has a full molly front. So that's the tap in the general aspect of the tap. Um, it's a pretty good rig as it is. Um, there's some major deficiencies though. We'll talk about those deficiencies and then how to fix those so you can use this as a really good rig as it is um that's pretty affordable at the end of the day um so again so you can carry eight magazines total one two three four five six seven eight different pockets to carry magazines these will fit p mags and you can even fit ak mags in there so if one of those ak guys looking for a rig um this will do it for you um i know guys are carrying full eight and sometimes just six so you can carry all the magazines you want either way just in the given magazine pockets from there, full molly front, which is great because as you'll see, we're going to go over two different loadouts, um, which you can kind of put on the front of this thing. And then magazine retention, as it is stock, is these flaps. These are kind of, these kind of suck. So we'll go over a good way, an easy way to improve that, and that way you can actually get more of these pockets and not be stuck with these stupid flaps. Um, but yeah, that's the first major deficiency is magazine retention, how it sucks and we'll go over a way to improve for them. These, these wing pockets right here, they can fit your standard military radios. So your 148 embitters and your 152s will fit in there, and then various other radios will fit in there that are you know even just full-size tactical radios. And you can fit your small radios in there obviously as well because they'll fit those full-size ones. From there, on the back end, you have three pockets. So you got one zippered one, you got a good center admin pocket with the hook and loop flap, and you got a side wing pocket as well with the hook and loop flap. So you got plenty of room to keep flat items like maps, um, pens, paper, compass. Um, some guys are throwing in um, flatter IFACs in, one of the, in these wing pockets. So you can carry your IFAC even in these um, if you keep it real slim so it doesn't bulk out too hard. But you have good space on the back end of your tap to hold stuff. So that's pretty good right there. Um, that's something you don't really get in a lot of rigs these days is immediate admin space without having to do some upgrades from there. The other major deficiency in this one is the stock harness. I didn't even bring one out because they suck that bad. Do they do the job? Yeah, they do the job, but they just, they're not good. They, they sit awkwardly and they attach right here on the sides and it's just a bad point for attachment. And we'll go over how to fix that up um, with these rigs as well. But as it is, the harness sucks. That's the first thing you're gonna have to replace. These are compatible with most chest rigs these days. Any modern, or most plate carriers these days, um, any modern plate carrier, you're gonna be able to attach this to it and good to go. So if you're looking to do that, um, this is a really good way to do it. So from there, let's go briefly back over that. Six to eight magazines, you can carry two radios, full molly front, plenty of admin space in the back end. So from there, your base rig is just really solid. Um, if you're looking to do this with any modern scalable chest rig um, from your major popular brands, this right here, just what it's capable of doing, will cost you about 200 bucks. And brand new from us, you're looking at uh, about 100 bucks. So right there, you're saving money and you're getting a full capable rig. So from here, let's go into how to fix some deficiencies and some loadouts. Okay, so that first deficiency we talked about was magazine retention. So unfortunately, we can only really easily fix up four of those without doing some major edits to the rig, but those four get you pretty far. So what you do is in place of the flap retention that is right here, which I haven't cut these ones out of this one, you replace it with some shot cord. These ones right here, if you follow us on Instagram, you know that I love the HSGI bungee cord, or if you follow us on YouTube, you've seen me do so many videos on it. Um, it is the first major fix is just take that bungee cord kit and you can fix up those first four mag pockets. Um, and that gets you easier access to the four 
And again, you can fit your PMAGs or your stand ags in there, and even AK mags you can fit in there just fine. So you have four pockets readily available for magazine retention. Those two right here, um, generally speaking, I just I just keep as it is with that flap because those are more of just a uh, almost a reserve kind of magazine at the end of the day on my part. But you can replace those two. Um, a lot of guys are putting grommets in right here. They're taking a grommet gun, putting a grommet right there, and then doing more bungees. So you have six on bungees. And these last two wing pockets, um, you can do the same thing or you can put a grommet in there and have all eight magazines on bungees or just stick to the four. Two with that still solid but a little sloppy uh, magazine retention. And you have wings or pocket. They're, your wings, you can use radios. You can shove tourniquets in there, shove water bottles, whatever you need to be. But you still have six magazines, which is pretty good to go from there. Next is going to be your harness. Like I talked about, major efficiency. And there's <clears throat> that's a pretty easy upgrade to go from. And you can go wherever you want with that. So I'll just show you two examples of harnesses to upgrade with. Um, and both are pretty easy to get a hold of and are within most people's budgets at the end of the day. So your mainstream H harnesses from all your chest rigs, such as Spiritus, Haley, um, Arbor Arms, uh, Mayflower, they're all going to fit your tap. So that right there, you can get your favorite company's H harness and put it on your tap, and you're good to go. So this one right here is the Spiritus one. This one's a custom one from Extreme Gear Labs that works out real well too. Um, so you can go custom even and get you know go sky's limits there when it comes to custom and get pockets on here, get additional molly space, get it padded, do whatever you want. So replacing the harness is really the first thing to wear if you're not going to attach a struggle to a plate carrier. Um, you're going to want to get a harness and they're readily available on the internet through either your mainstream brands or going custom and getting really exactly what you want. From there, that waist strap, you have to get as well. That's going to require some additional buckles. So if you see on here, I've added a buckle to the corner and I've added a buckle to the bottom. And I've just deleted this, I've just cut it off. So if you're, if this is a personal chest rig, easily to cut it. If it's issued, you might just want to tighten this thing up and then tape it up and leave it there that way the guys at CIF don't charge you for this because these can get pretty pricey depending on the year um, the full rig and everything like that so if you're if this is issued to you you're still gonna have to turn it in I'd recommend just taping this thing up otherwise cut it off if it's a personal chest rig or you just bought an extra one for you within service but yeah adding those two buckles right there if you buy it brand new um, especially from us it's gonna come with all those extra buckles um, or if you're like me you also just have buckles laying around, and you can buy these two um, separately on like Amazon, eBay. If you search the internet hard enough, you can find all the buckles you need. And then sometimes when you buy a harness kit, it'll come with extra buckles. So just keep that in mind, replacing the one right here so you have a buckle to hook in your harness when you get it down to H harness, and then that waist strap. So this waist strap as it is right here, sitting in that center, it leaves it a lot of flop. When you hook up your H harness and then waist strap, it gets rid of a lot, it gets rid of most of that flop, so you're not having to worry about that. So that alone fixes most of the issues the TAF has, just fixing up that center four pockets for magazines and replacing the harness and getting both of those things adjusted down to fit you. The biggest thing is just adjusted down to fit you well over the clothing that you're gonna wear when you're wearing your tap. And then biggest thing from there is just how you're gonna set it up. That, those are the two issues that really hold the tap back from being um, a fully capable rig as it is, but those fix it. If you're attaching this to your plate carrier, again, you don't have to worry about the H harness. That's kind of a secondary thing for you if you just want to wear the standalone, which I recommend having the harness just be able to wear it standalone as well. Okay, so let's just go over two quick loadouts on um, how to run a tap past just running it slick, which is more than fine if you just want to run this slick and be kind of a more slim down at the end of the day. So again, you can run it just like this slick, or you can run it these two different loadouts. So this is a pretty general purpose kind of loadout. Um, keeps it pretty lightweight, and you have plenty of magazines on here. So let's go over from um, my left to my right, what kind of pouches I have on here. Unfortunately, not every pouch I have on here we sell, but this is kind of stuff you can have laying around your house if you're into gear, or we sell pretty much anything between the two rigs. You can get these whole loadouts. So water source, first off. 
Um, you definitely want a water source on here if you're able to, if that falls into what you're doing. And right here I have a V2 Eagle Industries canteen pouch that also functions as a good GP pouch. So I can keep a canteen or I can keep a, uh, even a Nalgene in there and have a quart of water right on my rig. That's good to go to keep me hydrated at the end of the day. If you're wearing this with a backpack, I still recommend you keep a water source on your rig just in case you drop your backpack. You still have water on you and you're good to go. From there, I have two more kind of like speed mag-ish kind of deals. It's just easy to get two magazines and some Blue Force Gear singles. Um, that way you have two more. So I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six in the back end and two more. So I have eight magazines right there, which is one more than your standard loadout. And then nine if you keep one in your rifle. So you're already plussed up on magazine retention um, and magazine just loadout in general. And it's not going to be too crazy heavy on you. So two magazines, you can run those any way you want. Some people like to put triples on here, just a shingle, and have four and then three up front for seven and then keep these wing pockets kind of empty. Um, if you're on the skinnier side, these wing pockets can be kind of hard to draw out of uh, once it's mounted on you and tightened down to fit you good. So keep that in mind when you're doing this and when you're trying out those stuff, trying out your rig and your loadout. Keep that in mind that the ones right here, your five and six kind of magazine, are harder to get a hold of. So keep that in mind. And that's why I'm running two up here, just easy to get to, and keeping these kind of replenish magazines elsewhere at the end of the day. Got a bit of a gap here. Then I got a GP pouch. Um, it's a cry GP pouch. I just love these ones. So I got this one here. And I can keep, you know, all the odds and ends I need right on me up front. Easy to get to. And, you know, compass, um, spot and scope, VS 17 panel, multi-tool, 550 cord tape. All those little things that you could just have on you for any general purpose application. And from there, you know, it's empty right now. But an IFAC. This is an Eagle Industries V2 um, SOF IFAC that we do carry these regularly. Both these pouches we carry pretty regularly. Um, so yeah, that gets you up front, just easy to go, carries everything you need to right then and there, and plenty of mag retention. From there, again, six magazines up front. So you have plenty of magazines right here, almost a full combat load, especially with one in, the mag one in your rifle. Um, you cannot really argue that kind of magazine retention, just capability to carry. Um, so yeah, that's that basic loadout, and in the back, we got map, get another VS17 panel, um, and some other little things back here that I've kind of distributed out through the three pockets and po my own pockets too. So plenty of space to carry all your gear. And this is a pretty general purpose type rig that's going to get you through most things. So let's go into other setup that's a bit heavier as far as loadout and can really get you what is becoming my favorite rig at the end of the day. So this one, um, let's talk about this loadout. All right, so this is definitely a heavier loadout compared to the last one. And um, it's something I've come to really like recently after I set it up and been wearing it around a little bit. Um, it's definitely a heavy loadout and definitely not for everybody, but I can show you the kind of capability you can really set up with a tap. On the wings here, I have sustainment pouches. These are USMC sustainment pouches that I spray painted up and then modded up a little bit with some bungee cord. Um, that video is out there too if you want to look back on our channel. I've had to really kind of get the most out of your stamp pouches and keep them cinched down um, if you don't have them completely packed full, if you want them to put you other where, be placed somewhere else other than your rucksack. So that right there, I have tons of room for stuff. Um, if you're wearing a chest rig kind of standalone, no backpack or just a small backpack, this allows you to still carry plenty of stuff. Um, right now I have each of these load out with a they have a whole tarp in there, plus a little other odds and ends, just to get some weight in there, just to see how it feels. And they feel pretty good on tap with that H harness and adjust it down uh, properly to my body. So from there, you can put water in there, canteens, uh, Nalgene's. Um, you can even, like, if you're going crazy, you can even put a whole hydration biter in these stamp pouches. And I'm really just loaded out. Food, all the other things you're going to need on your kit, on your person at the end of the day. That really does it. But it's a little bit heavier of a rig. It's not for everybody at the end of the day. Going in from there, on either side of these mag pouches, I have, um, I used Eagle Industries 40 millimeter pouches, which you carry. These are awesome little pouches. I have a whole SOFT from a TAC Med tourniquet shoved in there. You can fit your Cat Gen 7s in there as well. Um, these will take a bunch of different items you can fit in there. Flashlights, multi-tools to keep that right up on front. Um, if you don't mind having an open end on your magazine pouch, you can put a pistol mag in there. 
and that'll fit pretty much any double stacked 9mm, even some 45 magazines uh, will fit in their pistols. So these are pretty good small utility pouches to carry a bunch of different stuff. And I could load both up with tourniquets and be good to go. Um, but yeah, just easy way to keep some stuff right up front, easy to access, stuff I'm going to, especially the multi-tool, need on a regular basis. From there, two USMC speed reloads. Um, these are good because you can flap cover them as well. Unfortunately, they don't fit PMAGs that well, but you can fit your stand axe in there just fine. It has some solid retention on there, and also have two speed reload type magazines on the front of your rig, which pluses up this again to eight magazines. So it's really easy to get eight magazines on here. So if you're running around airsoft and you want to carry, you know, thousand BBs on you, you know, that's super easy. If you're running around with your buddies, or if you're in the military, um, easy, easy, easy way to get even more ammo on yourself and to carry everything you need right in one place. From there, again, six magazines, easy to set up. Um, again, these ones, I don't mind leaving that flap there because I already have six and just keep these two additional, my seven and eight, ready to re replenish, replace, do whatever I need to do. From there, something you see every now and then, I'm still trying to figure out if I like it or not. Um, you kind of need a holster compatible to do it is carrying a pistol on your wing right there so um, it is something you can do on me i'm a little skinnier so it's hard to kind of get into this pistol so it's definitely like kind of a last stitch kind of thing to get there but you can do it and you can rock your pistol right on your chest rig if you had a molly compatible holster you could even throw it on the front and have it right there or you could throw it further in and have your pistol easier to get to so you can carry a pistol with this chest rig um, like a lot of other ones can sort of do as well. Uh, it definitely does happen and it's easy to do. And you could fit, I mean, I have an M9 right here. You could fit a Glock, any sort of full size uh, nine mil pistol is gonna fit in here with a, a decent Kydex holster. Really easy to get in there. So that's, you know, this is more than enough to do anything I want as far as chest rig. I can carry anything and everything. I really like this base right here um, in front because it really just gets me set up for success. And if I change these sustained pouches out, um, I can still have GPs, canteens, something a little smaller on the wings and be pretty solid set up to go. So those are three different loadouts or two, and then a slick loadout without a set of tap up. Um, again, as far as cost goes, uh, the surplus gnome and I did a cost breakdown from um, some comparable chest rigs that are scalable to get this kind of capability. And if you buy from the ground up, again, that's gonna be the most expensive way to do it is the ground up. You're looking at 300 to 350 to get this kind of capability. If you're already in the military, you're gonna have a tap, you're gonna have a bunch of pouches to throw on there that you get issued out. And so you're good to go to be able to do this pretty easily. If you're just getting a tap now, you probably already have a bunch of extra pouches laying around and you can do this pretty easily with stuff you already have. Save your money there or buy a tap used and get it from us when it comes used. It's just the tap with the harness, um, the stock harness, and build up from there um, and save yourself a lot of money. And you're looking at maybe 150 bucks after buying the tap, your favorite harness, maybe one or two additional pouches, and really good to go. So as far as cost goes, um, if you're on a budget, this is a no, no brainer. If you're not on a budget, but want something that just capable of doing pretty much anything you could want to do, the tap. Um, once you start messing with it and put some thought into this rig, it's hard to beat, uh, just based on capability. I hated this when I was in. I did not like the tap. But then again, I also didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't have the time to really set up how I wanted to. It was just, here's a tap, put stuff on it, put it on your kit. Um, there, It was a pretty new thing still at the time. So nobody had kind of really played around with it either. So having time to play around with it and being a decade later, um, you know, there's definitely a lot you can do with it. And those first two things, just upgrading those four center pockets, four magazines, and getting a new harness, that alone will change a lot of what you think about the tap. So yeah, so make sure you pick one up, um, check all this out. Um, we got other YouTube videos covering the tap as well and covering some of these upgrades. So if you really need an in-depth look about how to do some of this stuff, make sure you check our other videos out. And if you want to see a bunch more tap loadouts, make sure you check out our Instagram. And if you want to make sure you want to catch these when they're on sale, make sure you sign up for emails. Mm -hmm.